final item of business today is the Member's Business Debate on Motion Number 10025 in the name of Clare Baker on Celebrating the Scottish Spud. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could press the request to speak buttons now. I call on Clare Baker to open the debate. Seven minutes, please. Um, thank you, President Officer. I'm delighted to be holding this debate this afternoon and thank members for supporting the motion. Um, last September, I was asked to host a Potato Council roundtable, and I'll be honest, there were other events on in Parliament that night, and I thought I've got to go and talk about potatoes all night, but it was genuinely one of the most interesting meetings I've ever been to in Parliament, and I left that meeting a complete convert to the value of our Scottish produce and the importance of potatoes, and a thing that we hardly ever talk about in this Parliament, or I would argue we don't do enough to promote. Um, potatoes are affordable, they're environmentally friendly, they're a staple of a healthy diet, they're nutritious and they are a leading Scottish product. product. Um, and I'll admit to also having some teasing about holding the potato debate this evening, but you only need to look at the Scottish potatoes exports. Um, in the Parliament, we frequently talk about whisky and salmon as leading Scottish exports, with, and they have targets to increase their global reach. And yet, when we look at potatoes, Scotland is the second biggest producer of seed potatoes in Europe, um, and almost 30% of seed potatoes are grown in Scotland and exported to both the EU and non-EU countries, including um, over 40 countries, including Egypt and Morocco. Um, I think that's quite impressive, but we don't talk about our exports in this area or our global importance. Scotland has the perfect combination of soil and weather. That might be something we're not always grateful for, but we do have a great combination of soil and weather to produce a, a world-leading product, a product which many other countries rely on. And in a time of when we talk a lot about food security, it is an important cornerstone of Scottish produce. We should be looking at ways to support and grow the sector. And like all areas of farming, there are yearly fluctuations and challenges in price and productivity. But the estimated value in 2012 was 160 million. And 80% of all British seed is grown in Scotland with a sector value of around 100 million. So it is a significant sector and it is a Scottish success story we should celebrate. Um, I mentioned food security, but if we look at the other global challenges, addressing climate change and sustainability, food chains and production have a significant role to play in addressing some of these challenges. And potatoes that are grown in Britain use just 29% of the water compared to the global average. And the journey from field to plate is much shorter than other comparable produce. And if we think about rice or pasta and the water, energy and air miles that are used to produce these products, potatoes compare very favourably. Uh, but there is ongoing work into the future and the James Hutton Institute are investing in research for the sector, developing varieties which require much less fertiliser and water input so these can be grown with a much smaller environmental footprint. Um, potatoes which can withstand environmental pressures are good for the export market but they're also good for future proofing our own uh, produce against the impact of climate change at home. And yet the potato sector is facing significant challenges. Um, consumption. consumption has fallen across the UK, but most significantly within Scotland. Since February 2012, consumption of fresh potatoes in Scotland has fallen by 13%, compared to 9% in England and 10% in Wales. Um, we can suggest several reasons for this. Um, our eating habits have changed. Uh, we've seen an increase in the use of pasta, rice and noodles. We have much more options than we did generations ago when meat and potatoes were the staple um, diet. We have um, changed lifestyles, uh, busy lives combined with less meal preparation. And when you get home from work, potatoes don't often seem like the obvious thing to cook. It might, you know, your impression is it'll take a while to prepare that if you plan to cook at all. Uh, but supermarkets and producers are trying to respond to this with more convenient but fresh product options available. So we see you know, product development trying to address the issues of consumption. We've also seen a shift in the type of potatoes that we buy. And we are now in the new potato season and I hope members will come along to the Potato Council event tomorrow lunchtime and try some of the new um, potatoes. You're most welcome. But the consumer is increasingly buying smaller potatoes and in smaller bags. And while that maybe helps with consumption figures, it does leave um, challenges for the Scottish potato market. It leaves them vulnerable and too seasonally, seasonally focused. And research also has a significant role to play in all of this. 
We all like good-looking fruit and veg these days. Um, and while I think there is a job to do with the consumer accepting produce that does look like it's actually been grown in a field, there is also advantages to working on improving the appearance, improving the nutritional profile, reducing greening and sprouting, and developing better flavour. So I think all these um, issues can contribute to how we improve consumption levels. But of course, there is always a perception that potatoes make you fat, and this is probably one of the most difficult myths to address and to reverse. Starchy foods are our main source of carbohydrate and are important in a healthy diet. Yet the idea that potatoes are heavy in calories still persists. And when I spoke to people about having this debate, I was surprised by how many people still had that impression, but potatoes make you fat, that's why. Um, this is a misconception. And often it's not the potato, but it's the butter or the oil or the salt that we add that's the problem. And if you eat potatoes with the skins on, they are a great source of energy, fibre, B vitamins and potassium, as well as vitamin C. And the UK Department of Health have recently changed their dietary advice to include potatoes with skins along with whole grains as a source of fibre. There is, however, no defined portion size for potatoes in the UK, unlike the 80 grams that is recommended for fruit and vegetables. It would be good to have clarity on this because that would help with the promotion of healthy eating guidance to consumers. And if it was true that potatoes were causing weight gain, I don't think we'd necessarily see falling consumption alongside increasing obesity figures. Um, I asked the Public Health Minister last year in a PQ about the goal of increasing potato consumption by 25%, which was in the Preventing Overweight and Obesity route map, and then removed based on advice from the Food Standards Agency. And I, I do understand the reasons for changing the advice, but I think it gives a confusing message for the consumer. I accept that part of this is the difficulty with a lack of an evidence base regarding the health benefits, but this needs to be resolved and a clear message about the nutritious value of potatoes and the role they can play in a healthy diet. While no one denies their value, potatoes miss out by um, the positive promotion because they're not part of the five-a-day message and they also miss out on positive promotion as a starchy carbohydrate because they're not a whole grain, which tends to be the focus of that category. Um, and the final point on this, potatoes are affordable. We have seen an increase in cost in recent years, but we have seen an increase in food prices across the shopping basket. Food prices are predicted to rise faster than incomes every year until 2018. There is significant pressure on global food prices and feeding a family gets more and more difficult. Potatoes remain an affordable product and is also one that people can grow themselves. And I know the Potato Council, as well as representing the sector, have been doing a lot of work with schools and have been supporting them through the Grow Your Own Potatoes project. Um, in closing, President Officer, this year is the 40th anniversary of the D-Day landings and the British Nutritional Foundation are using the opportunity to highlight the potato, which they describe as new nutritional insights into an old wartime food hero. So potatoes can seem old-fashioned and the consumption figures I gave earlier are even starker when you look at the figures in terms of age and we can see consumption is falling much faster under um, those who are aged under 40. But if we think about the global food challenges we face, affordability, nutrition, sustainability and the environment, we do have a Scottish produce that we should celebrate and we should be proud of. Thank you, President. Many thanks. We now turn to the open debate. Speeches of around four minutes, please. Angus MacDonald to be followed by Dr Richard Simpson. Thank you, uh, President Officer. Um, I'm certainly pleased to uh, be contributing to this debate this evening and thank Claire Baker for bringing the debate to the Chamber, uh, allowing us to highlight the many benefits uh, to both health and the economy of the, the Great Scottish Spud. Um, I've actually got a, a long association with the, the Great Scottish Spud, um, growing Kers Pinks on the family farms up in Stornoway uh, for the outer Hebridean market. Uh, where the flowery, dry texture of Kers Pinks goes so well with the local delicacies such as salt herring and gouga. Uh, the gouga, of course, being the salt baby gannet, uh, which half a century on from being born on the Isle of Lewis, uh, I still haven't managed to acquire a taste for. Uh, and I can say that without worrying about uh, damaging the gouga industry, as demand greatly exceeds supply. Uh, my association with the, the Humble Spud continued when I trained as a livestock auctioneer with United Auctions in Stirling, uh, where we would regularly hold seed potato sales, and I learned of hundreds of varieties that I had never heard of before. Uh, following the sale, <clears throat> as a trainee auctioneer, I used to have to phone in the sale report to the Glasgow Herald and the Scotsman, the P&J and the Courier, and that was in the days before email and fax. So I had to spell out each of the varieties to the copy girls. So I now have varieties such as Desiree, Pentland, Javelin, Osprey, 
and Russet Burbank uh, etched on my mind. Uh, and I'm sure there's lots of retired copy girls out there who are extremely relieved they no longer have to type endless potato varieties uh, for hours on end. Uh, and to look at the names of the multitude of different varieties, such as uh, some colourful names, such as the Scarlet Pimpernel, Galactica, Fontaine, Asterix and Sylvana, uh, to name just a few, uh, there are just, these are just some of the 700 potato varieties held by the Scottish Government in its national potato collection. Yes, surely. Claire Baker. I wonder if the member would agree with me that while we um, have knowledge of variety, we should see more variety in our supermarkets, and part of dressing consumption would be being able to give the consumer much greater variety and, and choices in what kind of potatoes they consume. Angus MacDonald. Absolutely. If you look at the tonnage, um, the tonnage figures uh, that the government provides, um, there are basically just a handful of varieties that are used, and there are so many other a uh, brilliant, you know, um, varieties out there that, uh, that that people aren't aware of, and and, and they should be uh, made aware of them. Um, Scotland produces uh, 600,000 tonnes of potatoes each year, which are valued at around 180 million, and around half of that tonnage are our world-class uh, seed potatoes, which are clearly the the foundation of our potato industry. Um, Scottish seed potatoes are exported to over 50 countries outside the EU and generate 35 million for the economy, with Egypt being the largest seed export destination, with demand uh, from Egypt up 20% on previous years. And Scotland is now the largest seed supplier to Egypt, having overtaken the Netherlands, uh, which was the previous uh, lead supplier. So there's lots of good news out there uh, with regard to Scottish potatoes, and even more when you consider that a recent study of the nutritional values of potatoes and potato products in the UK diet, uh, published in the British Nutrition Foundation Nutrition Bulletin, revealed that choosing to consume potatoes in place of more energy-dense foods could have a significant impact to reduce calorie consumption and improve nutrient density, uh, potentially contributing to the avoidance of obesity. So, uh, President Officer, I'm certainly taking note. Uh, in addition, potatoes as a white vegetable play an important role in enriching the diet, providing important micronutrients, as well as dietary fibre and unsaturated fatty acids. So while potato consumption is declining slightly, it would seem that it should be encouraged. Um, particularly when you consider that according to the study, potatoes provide, an average, a more, provide on average more fibre, potassium, vitamin C, folate and magnesium compared with their energy contribution. Uh, this means potatoes increase the nutrient density of the diet. So there's an important role for potatoes to play in improving our diet. Not only are they a source of dietary fibre, they provide the micronutrients I mentioned earlier. So, in short, uh, providing care is taken over the amount of added fat and salt. Potato consumption should be encouraged as a white vegetable alongside other coloured vegetables as part of a healthy, balanced diet. <clears throat> uh, meanwhile, as my, my time is limited, can I just squeeze in a bit of praise for SRUC and the work they are continuing uh, to do on blight-resistant varieties? Uh, late blight costs Scottish farmers about £500 per hectare, or up to half of all production costs and the SRUC believe using newer blight-resistant varieties could help to control blight in a more cost-effective way. So it's clear there's lots of work going on at all stages in the potato industry, from research to growing to marketing. So let's do all we can to ensure the humble Scottish spud continues to make a significant contribution to our diet and our economy. Thank you. Many thanks. I now call Dr Richard Simpson to be followed by Mary Scanlon. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I add my thanks to Claire Baker for getting this member's debate on an important topic which is of relevance to Scottish and Scottish exports. I want to confine my remarks to three issues, the health value of potatoes, the health and safety of managing chips, and the future of seed potatoes, which is an important industry. I think we've already heard that the Potato Council has demonstrated uh, that uh, the, the significant benefits uh, health benefits of, um, of potatoes, and I think that the evidence base is now quite strong. I won't repeat all the elements that have been talked about by others, but potassium is an important uh, factor, as well as the energy and fiber source uh, and the vitamins that others have mentioned. Vitamin B6, for example, has many important functions, including contributing to normal red blood cell formation, the normal functioning of the nervous system, and the reduction of tiredness and fatigue, as well as the regulation of hormonal activity activity. Uh, Potato Council has produced a number of healthy eating recipes featuring potatoes, all of which are less than 400 calories per portion. This is a much undervalued and underappreciated product. 
Now, I wanted to look at chips because chips are everybody's favourite or one of the favourite ways in which potatoes are produced. And, of course, it is one which has had, in many ways, quite a bad press. I believe that we need much firmer standards in terms of chip production uh, necessary for, a, for health and a healthier population. If you look at New Zealand, they've, they've developed a set of industry standards for potato chips based on the best scientific evidence. The org their organisation, known as the Chip Group, which works to improve the nutritional status of deep-fried chips sold, uh, sold in New Zealand, um, have found that chips not cooked to industry standard have up to 20% fat in them, compared to the operators adhering to the standards who will produce deep-fried chips of between 7 and 9% fat. As an illustration of this, one of their programs is called Town Makeovers, in which they go to local producers of chips and instruct them in the standards. In Matamata, Mata, in Waikato, uh, after one of these programs, they reduced the annual consumption of fat by 1,711 kilograms, the equivalent of three trailer loads full of fat. Uh, so, you know, you can, this can have a major effect, and chips are very popular. I would like to see the fish and chip organization in Scotland and their standards in their, in their program ensuring that no fish and chip shop is awarded an award in Scotland unless it complies to the standard which reduces the chip con fat content to less than 9%. And good technique has other uh, important factors. It reduces the level of acrylamide and furan, both of which are carcinogens and are in high prevalence if the, if the uh, frying standards are not actually followed. So what will the government do to ensure that high standards in this area are, are, are encouraged? Now, to finish with, Presiding Officer, I want to deal with seed potatoes, an important crop has already been said, and I won't go into the figures. But one of the big problems, as, as Angus MacDonald mentioned, is potato blight. It is one of the things that causes real problems. And here I'm, I'm really going to uh, go into an area that is slightly difficult for us because the research that the present mechanism is to use Mendelian crossbreeding in order to improve blight resistance. And there's a lot of work going on in that at the James Hutton Institute and elsewhere. There's also significant work going on in Holland to produce blight resistant uh, varieties. But in America, they're going to follow the genetically modified route. And here they are using existing potatoes from South America and old, old forms of potatoes which are almost completely blight resistant. And this will shortcut the approach uh, quite significantly. So given that blight has a massive effect on this crop across the whole world, if we're going to survive as a seed producing nation, and it's the seed production that's important to us, I think we need to consider uh, the, the doing a risk assessment of not adopting GM to protect our industry's competitive. I am not advocating GM. The industry itself talks about all the public protections that need to be put in place. But nevertheless, we should be very careful that we do not lose out in this area to the Americans because this is an area of great importance to us. Thank you. Many thanks. And I now call Mary Scanlon. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I would also like to thank Claire Baker for securing this members' debate. Uh, in fact, I think this is exactly what members' debate is, should be about, uh, and, and I thank her very much for bringing this to the Parliament. Uh, growing up in Angus, we never spoke about potatoes. Uh, that was for the toffs. It was tatties. And tatties were part of our annual calendar of events, uh, from eight years old, I would be sowing tatties in the spring. Then we had the three weeks tatty holidays in October. And between these times, we were out picking daffodils at Dykeland, strawberries and raspberries at Charlton near Montrose in the summer holidays. It probably sounds like child slave labour these days, but it was actually just a normal part of our life. But I was aware growing up in Montrose of the excellent disease-free seed potatoes that were grown in Scotland and exported to many countries. So it's no surprise overseas demand for seed potatoes uh, has risen by 30% in the last 10 years. However, I have to say, probably like many people, and I make no apology for it, uh, I was not fully aware, or probably not very aware at all, of the nutritional benefit of potatoes until I started re researching for this debate. 
And it's perhaps the lack of knowledge about these benefits that's been responsible for some of the decline of 500,000 tonnes in the potato crop in the years between 2011 and 13. That, to me, seems a huge amount. I also have to confess that the year of the potato, 2008, also passed me by. I can't say I learned much about the potato that year. But the briefing from the Potato Council states that in 2008, the Scottish Government published a target, that Claire Baker mentioned it, of increasing potato consumption by 25% as part of the Healthy Eating, Active Living and Action Plan to Improve Diet and Tackle obes Obesity, which was to run for three years. Unfortunately, in the same briefing, it states subsequent policy documents have been inconsistent in referencing this target, and I hope this debate goes some way to addressing that. But in response to the goal to increasing the consumption by 25%, uh, Michael Ma Matheson stated, and I quote again, there is no evidence base regarding the health benefits of consuming potatoes specifically. Well, I have to say that I've found plenty, we've heard plenty tonight, and there are plenty more sources. As Claire Baker said, Scotland is the right place to grow potatoes, using just 29% of the water compared to the global average, and 133 times less water than that of rice, and 42% fewer greenhouse gas emissions than pasta. And on the health front, uh, and nutritional front, a medium potato provides 45% of the daily value of vitamin C. I certainly didn't know that. More potassium than bananas, spinach or broccoli. Didn't know that. And 10% of the daily value of B6. And all that for 110 calories with no fat, sodium or cholesterol. If I don't know it, how many people out there don't know that? Potatoes are fat-free and lower in calories than white rice and pasta. They are almost half the calories of the same amount of white rice and significantly lower than boiled white pasta. In terms of fibre, the potato yields double the amount of pasta and more than 20 times the amount found in boiled white rice. <laughs> uh, this is a superfood by any other name. But price is a factor here, as Claire Baker said about the rising food prices, given that other products such as pasta and rice can act as a very acceptable substitute for potatoes. And I do find it worrying that where potatoes have increased in price from £100 per tonne in 2011 to £270 per tonne in 2012. And I hope this increase in price will encourage farmers and other growers to allocate more land to the production of potatoes given this financial incentive. So, Deputy Presiding Officer, I have to say that I found the factual information surrounding this debate very interesting. I will certainly be sure to include tatties in my weekly shop from now on, and I hope that this debate has raised awareness about the nutritional and health benefits of the potato. Thank you. Many thanks. I now invite Paul Wheelhouse to respond to the debate. Minister, around seven minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I firstly uh, congratulate Claire Baker for bringing, I think, the, what has been a very fascinating debate and indeed very interesting and well, uh, well put together speeches from all my colleagues across the chamber today and fascinating de details in them about nutrition in particular. Um, but if I pose the question, can any of us imagine haggis and neeps without the mashed tatties? Uh, or the Sunday lunch or dinner without the crisp roasties and a battered fish without the chips, irrespective of the, um, the requirements and standards that uh, Dr Simpson ha highlighted. Or indeed, my own personal favourite, the baked potato. Um, can we imagine life without those? I could go on with a long list of the many dishes that can be accompanied by what some might call the humble spud, but I think we've gathered today uh, and we could categorise again as the uh, glorious, versatile potato. Whether fresh or processed, boiled, mashed, baked, fried, crisp, most of us love them in at least one form or another. 
And I, I now uh, know, I know that Angus Macdonald is a particular expert on uh, potato varieties. I'll be making sure the Cabinet Secretary is aware of that for future reference. Um, this is why I, I thank Claire Baker for raising this topic about one of Scotland's most important crops. Uh, Claire Baker also hosted a roundtable event, as she said, on tackling tatty targets here at the Scottish Parliament in September 2013, which covered many of the issues raised in this motion. And in Scotland, we have a long history of quality food production, particularly of potatoes. The value of the Scottish seed crop alone, as, as members have said, is approaching £100 million, uh, pounds, with over 11,000 hectares grown in 2013. Potatoes from Scotland represent some 75 per cent of total UK production. I, I heard, I think, a figure of 80 per cent, but hopefully we're in agreement it's a very significant share of UK production. We also grow between 16,000 to 18,000 hectares of ware or eating potatoes uh, per annum. The total output value of Scottish ware potatoes has doubled from £92 million in 2009 to £188 million in 2013. Uh, largely due to a strong increase in price that members have referred to. And collectively, the value of the Scottish uh, potato sector is £287 million. And this represents 9% of Scotland's total agricultural output, so it's a very significant crop for our agricultural sector. And add to this the fact that Scottish seed potatoes underpin potato production right across these islands, uh, which is worth an estimated £4 billion a year. Uh, this confirms the importance of the Scottish potato and why it should be celebrated and valued. Scotland has many natural advantages, as members have said, for potato production, including the Scottish climate. Our cool summers can be a distinct advantage in limiting virus pressure on Scottish potato crops. This is allied to Scotland's freedom from serious potato quarantine pests like brown rot and ring rot. And I know James Hutton and Stuart are looking at the impact of climate change on uh, potato production and we we'll look forward to, to their research. This freedom does not happen by chance um, and is the result of strong collaboration between growers, potato council, Scottish government to ensure a range of voluntary and statutory measures are in place to maintain and build on our worldwide high health reputation. And this includes Scottish Government undertaking soil, tuber and water surveillance to monitor for quarantine pests and diseases. We are rightly proud of our high health status, uh, but we cannot rest on our laurels. Plant health is the root of Scotland's thriving rural economy, and uh, this is why I announced the development of a new Scottish plant health strategy on 18th of March at a workshop with stakeholders. The strategy will be hugely beneficial in helping us tackle the increasing challenges of new pests and diseases that may affect production. Strong collaboration with all interested parties is also vital in protecting our plant health, and that's why the Scottish Government works in partnership with the Potato Industry and Potato Council to ensure we have robust measures in place to build on our advantages. We fund potato-related research in Scotland to a value of around £4 million per year, and we liaise closely with the Potato Council on this to complement their input and their efforts. Scottish potatoes are also consistently successful in European and international markets. Uh, I think Angus Macdonald and others have referred to, to Egypt. Uh, I think it's 49 per cent of our total exports outside the EU go to Egypt. Uh, but over the current export season, uh, we have 77,000 tonnes to over 20 different countries outside the European Union. Uh, another very good year for our exporters. And again, this is a result of strong collaboration between exporters, Potato Council and Scottish Government, working in tandem to, to, to nurture existing markets and to develop new ones. The Scottish Spud also plays a vital role in the success story that Scotland's food and drink industry. Since 2008, our food and drink sector has experienced the strongest growth and turnover of all growth sectors in Scotland, standing at 14%. And as Claire Baker noticed in her motion, consumption of fresh potatoes has been in decline, with a drop of around 25% over the last decade. Process, uh, processed potatoes also declined over the same period by around 13 per cent. And the reason for the decline is unclear, as members have said, but the decrease appears greater in more affluent societal groups, uh, suggesting some form of cultural shift. Uh, potato prices may also be a factor. They rose by almost 30 per cent, as a number have said, uh, today between 2007 and 2012. And this increase is close to the average in food prices, but higher than the price increases for fruit and vegetables in the same period. Uh, research shows that consumer reaction in the UK to price increases has been to buy fewer and cheaper potatoes rather than pay more. The long-term decline in consumption is of course a concern and I commend Potato Council and members for raising this issue today. Uh, and the, the, obviously, the Potato Council have a key role in promoting the sector. The Government uh, consistently recommends and promotes potatoes as an excellent source of starchy carbohydrates. And examples include advice to retailers on product placement through the Healthy Living Programme, uh, the Food Standards Agency uh, Scotland Eat Well Plate, and shortly as part of supporting Healthy Choices guidance due for publication at the end of June uh, this year. 
Uh, if there is a key message that's come out of the debate from all members, and I commend them all for the detail in which they, they, they have uh, described it, uh, there is the issue of nutrition. And clearly we have a, a problem in, in that potatoes are perceived to not be as nutritional as we now know they are. And uh, Claire Baker, Mary, Mary Scanlon, Richard Simpson, and indeed uh, Angus MacDonald all made these points about the, the particular quality, so I'll not repeat them. But most people are not eating enough of this type of food, so increasing our consumption of potatoes is an ideal way of achieving our health targets. And reflected um, the, the comments made by, by Angus MacDonald, it's important that Scotland's population is in a position to make informed decisions on what they eat. And the sheer variety of potatoes was a surprise to me. I hadn't appreciated the breadth there. So the Scottish Government published revised dietary targets in May 2013 following a review by the Food Standards Agency in Scotland. These set the population uh, wide shift required to improve Scotland's dietary health, which includes the intake of starchy foods. I do pick up uh, the point that Richard Simpson made, I think very fairly, about the way the potatoes are cooked in relation to chips, and that's something uh, I, I wasn't aware of, the, the, the di diversity in terms of the techniques used and the fat content ultimately arises. So I'll, I'll certainly raise that point with my, my colleagues just to see if there's anything we can do. But food education is also high in the government's agenda. For example, we've invested £3 million over 2010 to 2015 to help teach our young people about the journey from farm to fork. Uh, it is why initiatives like the Potato Council's Grow Your Own Potatoes for primary school children are invaluable in teaching our future generations of consumers about where potatoes come from uh, and how they can be utilised in diets at home. And it's possible, I guess, to, to also build in perhaps more messaging about the nutritional value of potatoes uh, and perhaps even guidance on how, how they're cooked and to ensure that they are, uh, their health benefits are maximised. So I'm delighted to note that uh, Grow Your Own is celebrating its 10th year. Many schools across Scotland grow their own, which teaches pupils about the role potatoes can play in a healthy, balanced diet. This is a fantastic project which is complementing other food education initiatives that the Scottish Government fund, and I hope that we'll continue to engage with young people across the country for years to come. I, I commend Claire Baker for her motion. I do commend all members for the content of their speeches, uh, which is very constructive and positive uh, in favour of the industry, and I am pleased to have had the opportunity to celebrate the success of our Scottish spuds, uh, past, present and for, uh, for the future, with you all today. Thank you. Many thanks. That concludes Claire Baker's debate on celebrating the Scottish Spud, and I now close this meeting of Parliament.